Welcome to the channel. I'm Mallory Davis and today we're going to be talking about meteor showers and they're awesome to watch but I would argue even more fun to photograph. So today I'm going to walk you through some of the simple steps you can take in order to capture incredible images of meteor showers. So today we'll be covering where do you go and how do you know when a meteor shower is. We'll be covering the gear and the settings you need in order to capture incredible images. And lastly, be sure to stick around. I've got some bonus tips of things I've learned having shot these things for quite a few years. Location and tips for viewing. Much like any form of astrophotography, it's best if you can get as far away from city lights as possible to watch a meteor shower. The further away you are from all those city lights, the brighter those meteors are gonna show up in the sky. When picking a location, be sure before you head out to do one simple thing, and that's check the weather. The last thing you wanna do is drive out however far you may be going and get there and it be nothing but clouds. The other thing when planning your meteor shower viewing is check the moon phase. Again, similar to the lights in the city, having a full moon absolutely diminishes the brightness of those meteors and makes it really difficult to see them. The best opportunity for viewing really bright magical meteors is when it's either a new moon or, or a half moon or less. And lastly, you're probably thinking, Mallory, when the heck am I supposed to know when a meteor shower is happening unless I happen to catch it on the news? Well, I'm here to tell you there is an app that I absolutely live by when it comes to planning my astrophotography outings. It's an app called Photo Pills. It's a one-time purchase in the Apple Store or Android Store, whatever it is your platform is. This app is absolutely instrumental in helping you know what are the moon phases and then obviously when are meteor showers. There's a dedicated section in the app that actually provides a calendar of throughout the year. There are multiple meteor shower opportunities. They can be phase one, which means those are the brightest ones. They can be phase two which there's not as much activity and they're not gonna be as prominent. And within that, you can scroll through the entire calendar year and based on the phase of the moon, the constellation or the origin of the sky where the meteors will be coming from, it gives you a rating of what is your opportunity to see meteors uh, throughout the year. One thing to note is when you're looking in the app, it will tell you when peak activity is going to be happening for meteors. And typically, if it happens to be cloudy the day of your peak activity in your desired location, note that there will be activity before and after those peak days, but the number of meteors per day or per hour are going to drop significantly. Let's talk about gear that you'll need to capture a meteor shower. The first and most obvious piece of gear you're gonna need is a camera. And you probably have something like this around your house, a mirrorless or a DSLR camera will do the trick as long as it can operate in manual settings. You'll also need a tripod. We're not gonna be touching the camera throughout the evening, so having it set up somewhere secure like a tripod is ideal. As for your lens, I typically prefer to use a really fast lens for all my astrophotography. So anything ranging from f 2.8 to f 1.8, anything that allows a lot of light in is really critical for capturing images of the night sky. Now, as for focal length, this is up to you. Just note the wider your focal range, so anywhere from 14 to 16 millimeters, that's gonna really maximize the amount of sky that you're able to capture meteors. Now, there's no guarantee of which direction they're going to come from. So a wide focal length allows you to have better chances of capturing meteors. But just know, the wider the focal length, the smaller the meteor's going to be. So for me, I tend to really love the 21 to 24 millimeter focal length. This allows me still a decent amount of sky, relatively wide, but also allows the meteors to show up much more prominent and much larger in my frame. A few other piece of essential gear that you may need. 
charge up your batteries and have some extras available. The idea is you wanna capture as many frames over as long as possible to increase your chances of capturing meteors. Especially if you're shooting somewhere cold, it's likely that your batteries are gonna drain relatively quickly, so having backups that are fully charged is a great option. I personally have never used a dummy battery or manually plugged in my camera. If that's an option for you, I would definitely go that route. An additional piece of gear is fast and empty memory cards. And when I say fast memory cards, the right speed. So when you're setting up your interval, which we'll talk about in a second, you want your card to be able to write it as quickly as possible so that it can then capture it the next frame and the next frame and there's no lag time. So fast, empty memory cards, a couple of them with a lot of storage is a great idea. The next piece of gear, we've already talked about it. It's photo pills. And within photo pills, there is a tool called Night AR. This allows you to see where the origin of the meteors are in your desired location. Along with this, it also gives you an idea of when the best time to set up your camera will be in order to capture the most meteors. The last bit of gear I would recommend is a comfortable chair, a blanket, some booze, whatever. Get comfortable, sit back with friends, and take in this natural phenomenon. It's one of my favorite things every year to try and go out and capture these, and I always do it with friends. Settings. We've got your gear all situated. Now, what settings do you use on your camera in order to capture meteors? First, let's start with aperture. As we mentioned, we want a very fast lens. So having that aperture wide open or at that smallest number, the f2.8 or f1.8, that is going to be ideal in order to let in as much light as possible and capture those flashing, beautiful meteors that dance across the sky. Shutter speed. For this, I tend to lean on photo pills again. I mentioned it's critical. In the app, there is a sharp star section. And based on this, you can calculate what shutter speed your camera needs based on the make and model of your camera, along with the focal length of your lens. Now, this just allows you to ensure that you have a clean frame, right? If you capture a beautiful meteor shooting across the sky, you don't have any star trailing in that frame. That's the route that I typically like to take. Some folks will just say, hey, push it to 30 seconds and go with that. Take a test shot is my ultimate piece of advice and you decide for yourself. ISO, this one's tricky. So depending on your location, if you're in a brighter, more light polluted area, I would suggest starting at about the 1600 range. However, if you are in a really dark sky environment, you can push this, right? Because essentially you need to increase that signal noise ratio. So when I'm shooting out in West Texas, which is one of the darkest places in the country, a border one, I'll push my ISO all the way to the 4,000 point. Now with post-processing, don't worry, you can clean this up, but pushing that ISO depending on your location allows you to capture the full gamut of the meteor colors. Now, just be sure to not blow out your images. So again, take a test shot and review before you start your interval. Speaking of interval, an intervalometer is an awesome tool to have in your bag. They're super cheap on Amazon. However, if you don't wanna purchase one of these or don't wanna carry it around, whatever, most cameras these days have an intervalometer built in. So what we wanna do, regardless of your approach, we want to take as many images as possible with a one second delay. That one second delay is going to allow the camera to write the image to the memory card and then get ready to shoot the next. So anything longer than that, you run the risk of missing a meteor because they happen like that. When you start your intervalometer, when you're putting in your number of shots, I personally tend to just do it to the maximum possible or infinity. I would much rather be shooting longer than I anticipated and be able to get rid of those images in post than come back to my camera having been, you know, hanging out with my friends and realize that my camera stopped shooting. So my recommendation, shoot infinity and then come back in post and deal with it later. 
As for focusing, we're gonna be using manual focus because there's not anything for the camera to focus on. Here's a quick video of how you can manually focus your camera in dark sky environments in order to capture sharp meteors. We're gonna find the biggest star we have in the sky. And so the trick with this now is to take a look on your screen. You can see infinity here. However, if you notice, that star is not sharp. So it becomes a delicate balance back and forth. And here you can see the star gets big again. So now we know we need to go back towards infinity to get this star as pinpoint and small as possible. So about right there. Bonus tips. You stuck around this long, you've earned this. Bonus tip number one, don't leave your camera unattended too long. Learn from my mistake. I was shooting intervals for a time lapse out in Terra Lingua, which is a ghost town in West Texas. Now, I can talk to a wall, and I met a fellow photographer, and we started chatting, and I was talking to him for a long time, and by the time I got back to my camera, the interval had stopped. All I was left with was this short clip where I was hoping to go from day to night. Long story short, be sure to keep an eye on your camera every now and again. Tip number two, before you start your interval, check your focus and then check it again. The worst thing that you could do is come home with a thousand images and they're all out of focus. I actually haven't done that one, but it's probably a good tip, right? Tip number three is for my Sony shooters out there, be sure to utilize bright monitoring. Bright monitoring allows you to visualize your frame in the pitch dark. And essentially what it does is in body as you're framing up, it pumps that ISO up to like a hundred something thousand. So you're getting a preview of what your frame will look like. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to imagine setting up your scene when it's pitch dark. So speaking of the bright monitoring, when you're framing up your image using that bright monitoring technique, one thing that I used to not do, and as I've developed as a photographer over time, is be sure to include some sort of foreground element. And I'm talking, it could be like the cemetery or this old car, this abandoned vehicle. It adds an element of, of realness and, and story as opposed to just having a wide open landscape. Those are fine, it's, it's fine. However, to help tell a story and take your imagery to the next level, Including a foreground element is a really nice touch. And then last but not least, bonus tip, make it a party. Have a good time, have a bonfire, hang out. There's something so magical about being with a bunch of folks and whenever they see a meter, oh my God. And then it's just this back and forth game of, you know, who sees the meteor first or which one was looking which way. Anyway, make it a party, have fun. It's one of the few natural wonders that we're gifted that I, I don't know, it's just such a gift to be able to sit out and enjoy it with friends. There you have it. The tips, tricks, settings, gear, everything that you would need to get you started with photographing a meteor shower. In part two of this video, I will bring you editing tips of how do you review all of your images, select meteors, and then create awesome composites in order to really demonstrate the beauty of a meteor shower. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. A like is awesome. Really, really appreciate you being here. If you have photographed a meteor shower, pop a comment down below. Tell me some of the highlights, lowlights, any of your tips and tricks that I may have missed in this video. Wishing you clear skies, dark skies, happy shooting, and we will catch you on the next video.